Really neat features of local large language models and all large language models for that matter is text categorization. And so in this video, I'm going to share with you a couple of different approaches that I've been using to be able to categorize text. The first one is literally just providing a text input. In this case, it, the scenario is we're, we're we're in an IT organization that's providing customer support. And this is a call center note that's been left around slow speed. And we've got some categories it could be about. Now, in this scenario, there's tens of thousands of inquiries every single week. Um, so it would take a human a very long time to be able to decipher them. And some keyword searches and some traditional NLP maybe will be OK. But you know, if we just pass it over to a large language model, why don't we give that a go and see what we can do? So what we've got is we've got some categories. We've got a customer inquiry here. You can quickly read through that it's all completely fictitious but the main take takeaway here is we believe this one's around slow internet speed on the ADSL service let's give ourselves a bit more space and what we want to do is we want to we've got Olama uh, imported now Olama you can download from Olama.com uh, and you can have a look at some of the different models available one of the smaller models that I've been enjoying is uh, Llama 3.2 which is this one here and obviously deep seeks available as well but I'm going to start with Llama 3.2 uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I go about just sort of prompting and getting an output back uh, using Olama so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go across and this is a quick way to make this happen so I go across to PyPy and I'm going to go to Olama and I'm actually going to go grab their boilerplate code because it's a really good starting point why type the whole thing out if you don't need to I'm going to clean this up a little bit I don't need some of these type hint type stuff Llama 3.2 We've got the user role and this is sort of the question and then the prompt we're going to construct it's going to look something like this so we've got let's give ourselves a bit more space here and the prompt is going to be something as simple as uh, prompt is equal to one two three give ourselves a bit a bit of space uh, based oh, where are we based on the below uh, we'll call it you know call center uh, IT support note please categorize the text into one category okay and what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, we're going to say note and we're going to pass in uh, with curly braces so we'll make this one f string which allows us to take the customer query and paste it in there and we are going to give ourselves a second one called categories okay where are we categories and categories is going to be our available categories okay pop that one in there shift enter on that and what we have available to us now if we have a look at that one and uh, we'll give ourselves a little print statement to make it look a bit nicer what that's going to look like is based on the below call center IT support note there's the note then we've got categories and it's just pasted in that list which is really nice given it sells three options is it dropout slow speed or billing inquiry I'm really hoping it lands on slow speed that's what we're expecting but let's see how it goes and all I need to do now is take our prompt which is that variable there and drop it into the content so we've got user and this is the content so shift enter on that and then what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the response so this is now um, doing the inference I would categorize the text into the category mm, technical issue or more specifically network and internet speed issues so it's it's done exactly what we don't want it to do uh, which is sort of expected it's a three billion parameter model it's going to need um, some additional prompting uh, so only select from the above category okay category no other text okay give that one a go not bad slow speed did it straight away very small amount of additional prompting but the question now is how consistent is that yeah I would I would select slow speed let's have a look I would categorize this text as slow speed uh, I would categorize the text under the category of slow speed so overall it's not too bad uh, we are getting a lot of other information we've got a couple of levers we can pull to make this better so um, there's some of the parameters that we can start to play with that includes things like temperature top K and top P um, and the way that sort of works is think of it as when it's generating the next token there's a pr you know, probability associated with how likely that token is to sort of appear out in its training data and so what we can do is we can dial the temperature all the way back to zero um, currently I think it's defaulted to 0.7 and so it has a more consistent sort of output I'm not going to do that only because slow speed is the correct answer and I don't want to jinx myself but every time I run this it is right but I just want to get a consistent output I just want the word slow speed now 
I've got a couple of options. I can keep fighting with the prompt, but I'm going to leave it as is. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use a feature called format. And format is a really interesting feature. It allows us to tell the model via Olama, we, we want this JSON schema back. And I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. First of all, let's give ourselves a bit more space because we're going to be doing stuff above here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go ahead and go all the way to the top because I actually do want to import Pydantic. Now, Pydantic isn't actually required, but it does help us uh, create this JSON schema. And it does it in a really Pythonic way, which I really like. So what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and we're actually going to create two Pydantic uh, classes. One will be our categories and the other one will be the final payload, which will be our result. And I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. So to get started, what I'm going to do is as simple as typing in class and class is going to be equal to category. OK, uh, within there, we're going to have uh, two things. We're going to have a string and we're going to have an enum. OK, and so what that's going to look like is as simple as we're going to have uh, dropouts is going to be equal to the string. Okay. Dropouts. We're going to have one called slow underscore speed. Now it's going to be equal to, you guessed it, slow speed. Alrighty. And then finally, we're going to have uh, a billing inquiry. Okay. So billing underscore inquiry, and that's going to be equal to, and again, you guessed it, billing inquiry. Okay. Awesome. So that's half, half of what we need to do. Uh, and I also need to import enum, which is important. So from enum, I'm going to import enum. So let's do that at the top. Alrighty. And that's just to make sure that we've got the correct data time. So shift enter on that. Uh, I didn't import it correctly. Okay. Let's try that again from enum, import enum, shift enter on that. And let's make sure I've got this right. Where are we? Okay. Capital enum. Let's do that one. Okay. Perfect. So now that I've got string and enum, the final step is to create in here, something called uh, the result model can be called whatever you want. But the result model is where are we result model, and that's going to inherit base model and base model. If we scroll to the top is from Pydantic. And then trust me, this is all going to make a bit more sense. Once we let me just quickly do this one result. Where are we? So we're going to type result and the result is going to be something from our category. OK, um, and what that's what that's going to allow us to do is that's going to allow us to run a method called model JSON schema. So if I go to um, result model, I can then run model uh, Jason underscore schema, right? And this, this is all Pydantic's done for us. Pydantic, all it's done is created the Jason schema. Now we could have typed all this out, but this is a really Pythonic way to do this by defining category, then having a result in category. This is our expected output. Now to bring this all together, it's actually really simple. So the final step that we need to do is we actually just need to add one additional param to our chats. We've got model, we've got messages. And all we're going to do now is we're going to add one more and that one more is going to be called format. Okay. And that format is really just going to be equal to our base model, right? Base, uh, sorry, our result model dot model JSON schema. Now that we've done that, when I shift enter, what should happen is I should get some very nicely, there it is, structured JSON. And why is that important? Well, because we've got that, I can then start to select our result. I can then take thousands of these call center notes and generate structured outputs. Um, and what's really awesome about this to really test it, if I was to say for I in range, okay, range 10. Okay, and we go enter on that. Make sure I got that one there, Adam. Okay, this will generate every single time results, slow speed, slow speed. So it's absolutely perfect. I am, yeah, I'm loving this. There's also a, a method called model validate JSON. Okay. So what you can actually do is you can say, where are we? Let me get this right. So if I go all the way, do, 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 do. so if I go to result model, okay. Result model has model underscore validate underscore JSON. And I can pass in the output from our local large language model. So shift enter on that. And what's really cool about this. Okay. Uh, I can say response. So we've got the response and in the response, we've got actually the result and in there we can actually just select the value. Okay. And so now I've got slow speed and it's consistent every single time. So to bring that home, what I'll do is I'll quickly add that in here. And so what we'll do is we will not even print out just the raw response. We will print out the response result value, which will be this one here. Okay. 
and shift enter on that one. And before you know it, we are getting slow speed every single time, very consistent, and we don't have to fight with the local large language model to give us the data in the format that we want. Um, this is really cool. I think this is sort of the future of, of large language models. I don't see myself using, or sorry, I don't see myself building a chat interface for any of the work that I do as a data scientist, data analyst. I really just want to take large volumes of text, get some values out of there and then use it as part of my overall process. And this is a really good step in that direction. Look, if any of this is at all helpful, um, please consider subscribing, it really helps the channel and I'll catch you in the next video.